Hello, welcome to Fitness Training Solutions. Uh, my name is Ben Brook, and I will be taking you today through the principles of nutrition, um, applying the principles of nutrition and physical activity programming. Today is going to be um, regarding the aspects of fats in the body in particular, and this is going to be part of your nutrition qualification for the level three um, certificate or diploma in personal training, gym based exercise. Okay, so first of all, what we want to talk about is in your manuals, you're going to look at what is a balanced diet. There will be questions on any aspect of the presentation that I'm doing today. So bear that in mind for when you're doing your research and when you're doing your revision in your uh, manual. So what is a balanced diet? So the definition is a diet, the food and fluid routinely consumed. That's the first thing you need to remember. Nutrition, what is nutrition? Well, nutrition is the intake and digestion of nutrients um, that are helped transported around the body and used for various different things, which we're going to talk about later on. Balanced diet, healthy eating. A diet which provides adequate amounts of essential nutrients to promote the health and prevent disease. So, what you need to remember is this is the aspect of nutrition that's covered within the level three personal training certificate. Some of the things on here are gonna be contentious in terms of they're gonna be very different. We're looking at people of sedentary lifestyles. We're not looking at athletes, we're not looking at bodybuilders, we're not looking at anyone that is in a specific sport. We're looking at the basic, average, Joe Bloggs individual that we're gonna take in a gym that is doing nothing at the minute. And we're gonna give them the basics, the basic elements of a diet. So, Obviously, what are we looking at? So first of all, first and foremost, you're looking at healthy advice and guidance. As a personal trainer, you should only be able to give healthy living guidance and nutrition guidance from the guidelines from your manuals. Um, if you are giving nutrition diets, diet plans, that should be a big no-no. Unfortunately, we shouldn't be doing that unless we are a qualified nutritionist or dietitian. Dietitian is governed by law, so you can only use those terms if you're a dietitian and qualified at university level. So what are we looking at first of all? In this few slides and uh, presentations that I'm going to bring to you, first of all we're going to look at essential macro and micronutrients. So what are they? So first of all your macronutrients you should know are fats, carbohydrate, protein, and we're going to frame water there as well. And then we're going to look into our micronutrients. These are going to be vitamins and minerals. So UK dietary guidelines for the average sedentary person that's not moving really much. Um, the UK dietary targets based on total energy intake suggest that fat should be no more than 35% of your daily intake. So this is not more than 11% saturated. 13% monounsaturated and 6.5% polyunsaturated. Protein should equal 10 to 15% and carbohydrates should be 50%. And this should be found predominantly from unrefined complex carbohydrates. So again, as I was saying before, UK dietary targets. Some individuals may require more or less of a given nutrient. So for example, an individual that requires higher or lower energy intake. So if someone's very active, very sedentary, uh, they've got different lifestyles, they're sporty. Someone that was pregnant, someone that is older, so the elderly, or someone that's looking at weight loss, these figures are gonna be slightly different. Obviously, someone that's completely sedentary lifestyle, you're not gonna give them huge amount of carbohydrates, which contains all the energy they need, when they're struggling to lose weight already, and they don't need maybe as, many, as much energy from carbohydrates, but what you've got to remember is, for your qualification and for the exam purposes, they're going to be based on UK dietary targets, which are within this presentation. Professional bodies I always look at um, the British Nutrition Foundation, British Dietic Association. Um, you'll be looking at stuff like the, uh, the Department of Health in, in papers for your course and the Nutrition Society. Remember, offering nutrition advice, as I said, is to do with your scope of your qualification. An individual required more complex dietary analysis should be referred to a dietitian. All your evidence or evidence-based knowledge should be what you're giving to your clients. So we need to be able to look at unsubstantial, unsubstantial marketing claims from suppliers and look at the evidence-based knowledge and say, right, this is where you want to go. So you need to be able to distinguish between the two. Academic sources. I love an academic journal. I think that you're going to 
benefit a lot from being a coming to personal trainer by doing more research. Remember, this is just a tip of the iceberg. If someone says to you that you're doing a qualification and you're going to be the world's best PT and earn thousands of pounds, they're wrong. You're not going to do that. You may do one day, but the way we do that is by educating ourselves, gaining more clients, becoming more knowledgeable, and applying what we've researched and learned over the years. I like stuff like the Journal of Human Nutrition and Dietics, the British Journal of Nutrition, uh, the Journal of Physiology is really good as well. Any academic source is going to be really worth reading. So today I'm going to talk to you about fats. I'm going to take you through the elements of fat, um, all to do with applying the principles of nutrition and physical activity programming, which is for your level three certificate in personal training. So the functions of fat, what do we know? Have a think now. Hopefully you know that it's going to help protect internal organs. We're looking at thermal regulation. We're also looking at the insulation of nerve cells. We're looking at the uptake and storage of fat-soluble vitamins. We're going to talk about vitamins later on in the, um, in the future slides to come and presentations. Hopefully, fat's going to provide you with energy. It's going to be a component of cell membrane. It's going to help storage and modification of hormones and provide a source of essential fatty acids, or our EFAs. So the classifications of fat. Hopefully you're going to see this come up now. So the classifications of fat. First of all, saturated fats, mainly from animal products, and they're a solid at room temperature. Then we have our unsaturated fats, mainly from non-animal sources, and these are a liquid at room temperature. The unsaturated fats break down further into monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. And I'm going to talk about different types of foods that you'll be able to take um, that are going to contain those fats. And then the last one, the one we don't really want in our diet, is the trans fats. These are non-natural occurring fats um, produced through hydrogenation. So we don't really want those fats in the diet. Um, I'm going to show you where you can get those sort of foods from, where you want to stay out of them. Hopefully you know that from looking at researching that every um, food macronutrient contains an energy value. So in the purposes for fat, one gram of fat is equal to nine calories for every gram. So where do these fats come from? What foods? Well, first of all, you're looking at saturated fats. Saturated fats are going to be found in meat, meat products. You're looking at butter, lard, cream, palm oil, and even coconut oil. And then we're looking at trans fats. Some vegetable spreads, baked products, ready meals, and fast foods. Polyunsaturated fats, obviously part of the unsaturated fats. We're looking at vegetable oils, nuts, oily fish such as sardines, tuna, mackerel, pilchards, and trout. And then we're going to look at the monounsaturated. And here we're going to see olive oil, avocado, seeds, nuts, rapeseed oil, and almond oil. And then we go into what's our EFAs, our essential fatty acids. And these are your omega-3 and 6. So omega-3s are found in oily fish, flaxseed, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, rapeseed, soybeans, and any dark green vegetables. Where our omega-6, they're going to be found in vegetable oils and polyunsaturated margarines. So EFAs and health. So first of all, what do the essential fatty acids do for our health? Well, first of all, you need to remember that they're going to protection of heart disease. So they're going to control blood pressure, prevention of blood clots, beneficial um, effect on blood lipid profiles. They're going to help with the reduction of the inflammation in arthritis and asthma. They're going to enhance transport of oxygen by the red blood cells, and they're going to enhance the immune responsiveness. One thing they also do as well, which some of you may like to know, is they're going to help the maintenance of the quality of the membranes. So therefore, they're going to help with protection against the anti-aging process. So just to recap, UK dietary guidelines for fat, 30% but not more than 35% of your total energy. 11% saturated fats, 13% monounsaturated, and 6.5% polyunsaturated fats. When we're looking at metabolism of fat, fat is in our diet is mainly in the form of triglycerides. Fat is broken down through digestion, which is known as catabolism, to form fatty acids and glycerol. 
With fat metabolism, once digested, fat can be oxidized and used as one energy. It can be stored as subcutaneous fat if we're consuming too much of it, like any of our macronutrients, not just because it's called fat. It's an energy value. like It has an energy value like any other um, carbohydrate, protein. If you consume too much, you're going to store subcutaneous fat. It's using the cell membrane. So it's using the cell membranes of a structure, molecules. So part of the cell membrane, part of that molecule, that structure, that's where it's used as well. It's used to synthesize um, and of uh, other hormones as well. So it's going to help synthesize our hormones within our body and help regulate our hormones. So that's why, again, fat is so important. Fat transportation, so how is fat transported? Well, fat and cholesterol need to be solubilized in order to be transported to where they are needed in the body. This is achieved by packaging them with protein in transport packages. These are known as plasma lipoproteins, so our PLPs. Plasma lipoproteins are classified in terms of their density. So for example, we have low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. Hopefully, you know what the LDLs and the HDLs are and what are good cholesterol and what's bad cholesterol. If you don't, LDLs, they contain high levels of fat and cholesterol. As they are carried in the body, they are thought to build up fat deposits on the artery walls, which is known as atherosclerosis, and these are often called bad cholesterol. Atherosclerosis is obviously um, a cause of CHD, coronary heart disease, so LDLs are definitely what we don't want in our body. Then we go on to HDLs. HDLs contain lower levels of fat and cholesterol. As they are carried in the body, they are thought to prevent the buildup of fatty deposits on the artery walls. So these are known as cardiopreventive and they're often known as good cholesterol. So what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is made in the liver and has several crucial roles in the body. The first one is cell membrane structure. The second one is steroid hormone synthesis. And the last one is bile production. Consequences of a high fatty diet. One, obesity. Two, CHD, coronary heart disease. If you've got low fat diets, the reverse of that, poor hair, skin condition. You're going to be deficient in fat soluble vitamins and there's going to be deficiency in essential fatty acids. And sub uh, subsequently, you're going to have a hormone imbalance. So to summarise health eating guidelines for fat as part of your qualification, you need to limit the intake of not more than 35% of your total energy requirements from fat. In particular, limit the intake of saturated animal fats. You want to eat nuts, seeds, olive oil and oily fish to ensure a good intake of unsaturated fats and our essential fatty acids. Try to eliminate trans fats from the diet by avoiding processed products like fast food and ready meals and hopefully that is give you a quick insight into fats for your qualification there are going to be more of these um, and some more fun type videos as well just to give you an, an insight into what's going on within the industry and to give you some guidelines um, speak to you next time bye